So is building a cage for video the same as Lego for adults? Hey guys, my name is John Sparkman, a wedding photographer and videographer now in Birmingham in the UK. You can find my work at jdsweddings.com or at jdsweddings on the social media. Now, I've been getting into a little bit of video work um, over the past year or so, doing a bit here, a bit there. But I thought finally it'd be a time to dip into doing it professionally for weddings, offering it as a service. And with that comes bookings and with that comes money to spend on things like camera gear. So today we're going to build out for the first time a working practical cinema rig. Uh, it's going to be on the cage I have with the Fuji X-T3 I have and I want to make it uh, achieve basically several purposes. We'll walk through it in just a second. Now a little bit of a preamble, a lot of the gear I own because I do YouTube videos, right? So the X-T3 I use for photos but the wide angle lens and the ND and the lights and the cage and the microphones and stuff I've been using before the video uh, but I wanted to this time use uh, specific pieces of gear to make a all-in-one piece of uh, kind of a handheld rig that I can also split in half and use in two different ways. I've used primarily small rig gear. I'm going to put the pieces I used, if I can remember them, down in the comments below and I would say that aside from the camera and the monitor and the microphone probably cost around, I don't know, 100 to 150 pounds for the lot. Um, now let's start. First off, I'm going to just use the X-T3 with a 10 to 24 f4 lens. And that is my wide angle. It's going to stay on it. And this is a generic cage for the X-T3. I wish I'd bought something from Small Rig, for instance. Uh, this is a little clunky, it is an aluminium all metal one. It does have an arc Swiss base and a NATO rail on the side and a couple of points, location screws, that kind of stuff for Arri. But first off, these just go together. There you go. So I want to get that nice and tight to the front and just give it a quick turn. It's a bit of a shame there's only one connection point on this, but you buy cheap, you, you know, it doesn't really work out. So we have a lovely NATO rail on the side, which you can clamp things to, just a general cheese board at the top. You've got an enlarged grip on that side, which has got a few holes there, a couple of holes here. Annoyingly, just where the button is to you know, use the camera is just beneath this <laughs> rail section here. Bit of an annoying one. A couple more points on the bottom. Uh, the Arca Swiss here is quite an interesting one because that basically I don't need a quick release plate at the bottom because that is an embedded plate, which is quite nice. Now I need to mount it to a base plate and then some rails. So I've got the base plate here. This is one by small rig. And first to utilize the Arca Swiss on the bottom of that, I've got a generic Arca Swiss quick release system. These are about 10 pounds. It just unscrews and releases that clamp. These go together. And they're just gonna stack right on top of each other like this. I know there's only one connection point, which is kind of a pain again, but because there's um, rubber gripping on the bot on the top, sorry, of the small rig plate at the bottom, it should keep it pretty firm throughout. Also, it's the only one which is a flathead um, locking system on the bottom. So uh, all the others use a hex key, but this one doesn't for whatever reason. But I don't want these to come apart. So to be fair, I don't care. So there you go. That is a quick release plate with a adjusting knob on the base, which is going to have some rails. These are 12 inch rails, they're aluminium. I know you can get a carbon fiber one, but I mean, this is going to be heavy. So I don't know what the difference is with some carbon fiber ones, apart from how much they cost. Base rails then go on the bottom of the camera using that quick release. Just hooks in, tightens up. There you go. Nice and easy. And if I want to get it off, if I just want to use that on a gimbal, which I definitely have, I'm going to do that. So next up, we have got a top handle. I just went for the rubberized one. It's got a little cold shoe there. And I'm going to attach it onto the top just at the front there. This is a bolt on one. So once it goes on, I don't plan on taking it off ever. And I'm going to position it just above. So it's in line with the middle of the lens because realistically I want the center of gravity to be above the lens 
and I also want the monitor which is going to go above it to be directly on the axis of the lens too. So annoyingly, despite most of these accessories being from small rig, a lot of the screw sizes and the allen keys are all different. I bought like six parts from them, but uh, yeah, they all come in different uh, configurations. Anyway, small shake test. Because that's bolted on, it's not going anywhere. If I take the rails off the bottom, handle stays. On the front of that mount, I'm going to put the small rig, very, very snazzy cold shoe to uh, monitor mount. This is flex, flexible-ish. Oh, it's just going to go in the top and tighten itself down. So the good thing about these being on a cold shoe instead of attaching it directly into your hot shoe, which is a terrible idea, there's no mechanics behind it. There's nothing you can damage if you over tighten it. You just use the Allen keys on the top here. And that's given me a nice point here, which I can just screw in a monitor to. This is my Fieldward monitor. This is the MA5 and it goes straight in the top. Now the monitor mount does have a little give. You can actually turn it sideways and you can bend it backwards and forwards. Be careful when you bend it though. You don't want to poke the screen and damage your screen. Uh, that's fine. Battery wise, you can either go little boys or chunky ones like this. I haven't done a comparison test to see the battery performance. I have both, but just for ease and lightness. Uh, I'm going to fit the Sony MPF. This is the 17 watt hour, 23 milliamp. It's a uh, it's a little one basically in the back there. So far we've got a monitor, handle, cage, some kind of rail at the bottom. I'm going to fit on the side handle. This is a wooden one. Oh, it's so nice. A wooden one with a NATO uh, clamp on the side. This has got a NATO rail just here. So nice and easy. It just hooks around much like the Arca Swiss plate at the bottom. Got a side handle now as well. It's a little bit on the loose side because I think this needs a slight tightening, but the awesome thing, yeah, it does. Oh yeah. The awesome thing about the side handle, it's reversible. Uh, you can, you know, invert it, put left, right. You can move the middle point of this. So this section, you can move it around. Uh, it's even got a little magnetic slot in the top. Check this, just for a spare anky. And I can stick a cold shoe mounted item or an ARRI locating pin item just above it. Talking about items, I'm going to put on the normal microphone I would use for vlogging. This is the Pro uh, Rode, video, Rode Video Mic Pro, I think it is. Just pop it there. Um, keeping it away from the camera a little bit just isolates the sound a bit more. It also stops anything uh, scratching the side or you know rubbing into here. So I've just got it just there and I'll get that mic'd up shortly. Now this is a very capable nice little camera setup you can run and gun just like this and you can wander around and take all the footage you need to it's nice and flexible keeps you wide keeps the uh, you know good microphone levels good access points here on the side you can probably do away with the rails at this point but I want to have a system which is pretty modular so I want to be able to take the camera off and then mount it immediately to my gimbal uh, so I can run around with the gimbal like a crazy person and for that I probably don't want the side handles and the top Which is why I chose for a NATO rail because I can just unscrew this and take it off without any tools um, But this monitor at the top it's got to be moved. So this is where the rails come in. Oh It's also worth mentioning you take off the bottom bit for going on the gimbal I don't know what kind of gimbals you have if you can fit 12 inch rails on but well, mine does not do that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rails. I'm going to make a big back end for it. So I think that's probably about right. I'm going to attach one of these rail blocks. You can get a pack of two for like 10 quid. They're dirt cheap. And this just slides in on the back. Uh, this will go in on the back and it just provides another point to add stuff. Okay. So on this stuff here, so I've basically got another little rail here. I told you it's like Lego. On that, <laughs> I'm going to be putting one of these, which is just a cold shoe point. I think this is like three pounds with free posting. Uh, you know, it doesn't do anything, which is why it's probably so cheap. But wow, that is a good bargain there. So that is nice and tight. That's right in the center of my point. Got some arrows on it. So that is where I'm going to put in 
this um, this section here from the cold shoe upwards. I'm going to take the entire thing off and it's going to go straight onto the rails. So let's first put it the right way around. There we go. And then I'm going to loosen this bottom one here. I do need a tool to do this because I have over tightened it slightly for the dramatic effect. There we, there we go. That was uh, pretty tough. And this, this boy is going to go down here. I'm tightening that down, move it into place, tilt that bad boy back. That is my kind of underslung mode. So I've still got access to the top handle, but I've also got a nice large five inch monitor I can run around with and I can see. If I need to get into my menus, I can go just behind it here. Uh, but this is going to give me a great shooting angle for lower down. If I want to shoot up here, I can just move it forwards. I can still shoot with the big one. But the advantage of having it lower instead of higher, um, I'm quite tall. And so I generally need to look down and six foot three, look down and I need to shoot down like this. So I think that's I think that's the way I'm going to be going forwards with this one. And if I want to swap it out, if I want to put it back up there, it's just one screw. I think that works out pretty nicely, to be fair. Uh, right, power for the actual camera comes care of an Anker PD power delivery brick. Now this is actually one that Fujifilm recommends on their website. They do a 20,000 and 26,800, I think, version. Uh, the PD is power delivery. It can output hideous amounts of power, like 45 watts, which will be enough to run the camera directly off this. Uh, if you just use like a lower powered slightly cheaper because this was 70 quid uh slightly cheaper battery bank you can do but your batteries will run out faster because it's consuming them and it's not giving enough top up juice you should be able to run this for hours uh, now to attach it i've got myself a looks like a mobile phone clamp but it's actually a battery holder clamp and i've already thought about this <laughs> it's only realistically like two to three different places i can put this i can either go here and just have it floating above, don't know if you can see that, floating above the system. I can have it here, on these here, I can have it hooked there. Advantage of these two is that it's always on the camera all the time. Or I can have it down there or something, you know, stick it in the rails. And this is to be determined, essentially. I can do any of them, which is quite nice. This little system is just a ratchet on the back. And I might use the other rail. I might just see, because this is hooked, I could actually have it underneath the whole the whole system. I could have it, you know, down here. I could have it here. But does that cause problems with focusing and such? Uh, give me two minutes to figure out. I suppose the advantage by having the battery, the extended battery on the chassis, like the rails, uh, then I can have my monitor, my rails on there, and it's like a very sturdy, you know, <laughs> machine gun style setup, and it's it's uh, pretty powerful. And then if I want to take the top off and just run around with it, I can do. If I want to stick it on another tripod, I can do. Um, on the base of these rails, I will have a Manfrotto plate because it's going to go on a tripod or monopod, depending on how I feel. So I'm actually just going to pull off that entire little system there with the rails. And so I've just mounted it on the bottom of the rails, so bottom section of it, and it's going to drop downwards because it's clamp based. Let's pop that in inverted, so that's actually underneath the system now. Uh, one of the positives of that as well, it's not actually going to interrupt uh, with any of the, for now anyway, it's not going to interrupt with the quick release, which is just here. It's not going to interrupt with the, oops, sorry, it's not going to interrupt with the secondary rail block, which is for the monitor, which is there. Works out quite nicely, actually. Stop. Keeps turning itself on. So you can see it's just there now. I can just pop that in. There we go. So we've just mounted it on the bottom there. Uh, now, until I have something like a shoulder mount, this is not going to be a problem. When I do have a shoulder mount, that's going to be a counterbalance. It's actually going to be behind and attached to the shoulder mount. So don't worry about that one being a uh, problem for now. There is going to be a tripod plate there. So when I stick it on a um, you know, monopod or whatever, it is still going to work. And I can move these rails backwards or forwards if I need to. The problem with having all of these attachment points on one side is it gets a little bit clustered. 
I'll be honest, I probably need to thread some of these through or buy some cable management plugs or whatever. You can get relocators and such, cable clamps, etc. So monitor, uh, sorry, microphone just goes in there and it's powered up here, has its own internal battery. Then we need, let's see what we've got. A USB-C to C for the power. This is gonna go in the side of the camera and then straight down into the power pack at the bottom. And there is an in, full HDMI in. And then there is a tiny little, looks like it's gonna break. So I'm sure someone in the comments is gonna murder me for that arrangement of cables, but I've just looped them around the back of this system here. So interchangeable battery, movable head if I wanna chuck it up here, I can do if I wanna lose the rails. If I wanna lose the rails, literally, Disconnect the power and the HDMI cables. Stick them in here, untwist that, and it comes apart. They're in two separate units. And if I want to disconnect the side as well and go straight onto a gimbal, and there we go. A run and gun little setup here. If I want to move that monitor, go straight on the top with an HDMI. It's separately powered from the back system. You know, I really appreciate those videos where people make really compact, tiny little units using very specific pieces of gear. And I've just jammed mine together on some rails. <laughs> if you like that setup and you wanna see more from myself, just click subscribe and you'll see a whole load of stuff about weddings and Fujifilm systems. Maybe a little bit more stuff about uh, kind of video cages and if I've updated this to have a shoulder mount with a rosette handle. Uh, stick around, I'll see you in a future video. Thanks.